Hello everyone, welcome back to Andrino's Creations. I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Thank you so much for the continuing support, guys. We ended the year with 55k subscribers. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. If you're new here and this is the first time you're watching me, feel free to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. Don't forget that this year is going to be great. It's going to be full of growth. It's going to be a new fresh start for you. It's going to be letting go of all the negativity from all 2021 and let's get this year started guys so all right so in today we are going to continue with silhouette studio series part two i wrote down some of the questions that you guys had for me and i'm here to answer them for you and of course if you have any other questions feel free to comment down below and i'll do a part three For the first questions, can you work on multiple projects? And the answer is yes. So if you go up here where it says untitled when you open up your software, you are going to go up here where it says untitled and you are going to see a plus sign right here. When you click on the plus sign, you are opening more and more documents. And then you are able to go back and forth to each document of your choice. Okay, so you could be working on a chip back on one, you can be working on a shirt on the other one, and so on and so on. So you just go back and forth to all your documents. Okay, next question is Can you cut separate projects on different machines? And the question and the answer is yes, you can. So if you have a business edition, you do know that you are able to use multiple machines, like I own. Uh, four silhouette cameo cutting machines and I could cut different projects in each machine as well as cutting the same project in all the same machine in all the machines okay so how will you do that so if you go to your next document and let's say um, I'm gonna put it on 12 by 12 for now Let's say I want to cut a circle, and this is just an example. I'm gonna be cutting out a circle with one of my machines, right? So I am gonna go to my send panel, and right here, you are going to select which cutting machine you want it to cut from. So you're gonna, right now they're all set unavailable because I have all my machines turned off, but they should say available when they are all turned on. So then I'm going to click on one of the machines and then once everything's updated, like you put your cut settings and all that's gonna say available and then you send to cut. While this machine is cutting this circle out, I could go to the next document and set up my paper size of whatever I want to cut here. And let's say on this one, I am going to be cutting a rectangle, right? So then I go back to my send tab. Uh, my machine called Betty is cutting right now. So I could go to the other one that Linda put my cut settings and I'm going to start cutting this rectangle. And this shapes are just an example. You are going to cut whatever you're cutting. Let's say you're doing multiple shirts and you have multiple names to cut out and stuff like that of different color vinyl. You can load all your machines with different color vinyl and cut it out. Or if you're doing a vinyl project and you're doing a car stock project, you can be using one machine to cut out the car stock. You can use the other machine to cut out the vinyl and so on. So how many other machines you have, just go to the next uh document and do a shape and then you're going to go to your send tab and then you're going to select your other machine to have your other item cutting okay if that makes sense but again i think i said this in another video but you can still cut the same stuff in all the machines as well so let's say i need a lot of rectangles um, I am going to go to the send tab and I'm going to send rows to cut this rectangle. Then I'm going to click on Linda, click send, cut the same rectangle. Then I'm going to go to Betty, click send and cut that one. All right. So that's how that works. The next question is how to save files and how to open files. So how do you save your files is there's different ways. If you have business edition, you have several options to save your files so you go to file 
you go to save as save to hard drive and then right here where it says save as type you're going to select which type you want to save it either as a pdf gsp jpeg png svg or a silhouette file you're going to name your file also i recommend doing separate folders depending on what you're saving um you might be a person that do a lot of digital so you can do like uh customer files you could do like a chip back file um chip back folder i mean and stuff like that or you could put like uh customer andrina shirts and you know do separate uh, folders and then you're going to click on that folder and save your file there okay you can also save to your library so you're going to go to file you're going to go to save as and save to your library of course sign in to your library And then you right here, you're going to name your uh, file. And then once you name it, you're going to click on OK. And it's going to save on your library. So you can save it either or on your hard drive or your library. If you don't want to get your library filled and you do not want to get your hard drive filled, I recommend getting a USB drive, connecting the USB drive to your laptop or computer. And then when you go to file, you go to save as save to hard drive right here look for the usb drive that you have connected click on there and then save your file to the usb drive okay and how do you open files very easy you might buy files from a website you might buy files from me you might buy files from etsy wherever you buy files from once you download and extract those files to your computer it could be to your usb drive or whatever you have two different options on how to open a file. You can go right here to your quick access folder and then you can search for the file and then you're going to uh, look for wherever file you're looking for. So let's say I just downloaded my uh, KitKat wallet um, template. So I'm going to double click on it And it's going to open in silhouette so that's one way you can also go to your quick access and you can drag your file into silhouette like that that's another way or you can go to file open and look for a um, file that you want to open let's say um all right let's say i want to open that elmo when you go to file open it's opening a new document if you want to stay in the document that you was already working on you got to go to file merge and it's going to merge it in here in the same one you was working in okay So that's how you save files and that is how you open files. How to delete stuff from the library. This was one question I got asked. So if you go to your library and let's say you want to delete anything here from your library, all you gotta do is click on the item, right click and delete item. That's it, that's how simple it is. That's how you delete stuff from your library. And um, I already showed you how to save stuff to your library as well. This is another question, how to add colors in the color palette. So if you go here on your right on your paint palette or your fill icon that looks like a paint palette, here you're going to see, now I do have Business Edition version 4.4 and you can create your own palette. So right here where it says new palette name, you're going to name the palette that you, whatever name you want. And you are going to go get your colors from Google or if you have an image that you want to use those colors, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to look here and I'm going to look Valentine's Valentine color palette. I'm going to click on images and I'm going to click on this one. Right click, copy image, go into silhouette, right click and paste.
I'm just going to use this one as a reference so you can see that I'm going to actually pick colors from these flowers. And you can do this with any image as well. All right, so we have these colors right here, right? Valentine's. And we're going to click on add. So now when you put your mouse over this one, it's going to say Valentine's. So you're going to click on your dropper right you're gonna click on the dropper you're gonna come over here and click on the color that you want so I'm gonna click and then click on the plus sign and now that's added there I'm gonna go back to the dropper click on the next color and click on the plus sign and you're gonna continue doing the same thing over and over until you have all the colors that you want on your palette All right, so you see those colors are added there. Now you can also pick from a image. So if you get your dropper and you come over here and go around the flower and pick a color and add it. And then you're gonna come back and add it. So that's how you have it. And then you are able to use these colors however you want. So let's say I am going to create a rectangle. And I can color that rectangle all the colors that I have now there on my Valentine's palette. Okay, and you can create another palette if you want, just name it and do the same steps, all right? So that's how you add color in your color palette and that's going to stay there. So if I exit out from uh, the palette and then go back, it's still there. My palette is going to stay there. Now, if you don't wanna use that palette ever again, you can just click there and right click and delete Valentine's if you don't wanna use that uh, palette ever again, okay? Okay, how to change cut settings and save them. So you're gonna go to your send tab. And then let's say you don't like the settings that Silhouette provide, you can always change them up or down. Here, you're gonna have all these settings. So if you click on one, they have the settings that they think is going to work. Um, it might work and it might not work. And if it doesn't, just go ahead and play around with the blade, play around with the force, and play around with the speed and the passes and see what works for you. For instance, when I click on car stock, the settings that I like to use is, well, let me go to a regular, um, that one's already saved. So let me see. Okay, so here they have that the car stock textured heavy 80 pound, they recommend blade of three, force of 30 and speed of four one pass if i don't like those settings i'll just go up and i like to use blade of six i like to use force of around 28 speed of four and two passes then it's going to say save as i'm going to click on that and then i'm just going to name it thick car stock Okay, and exit that out. And now that's always going to be saved like that. So when I go down now, my thick car stock is going to be there. And hold on, I gotta go to more actually. And let me fix it, uh, fours of 28. Speed of four, two passes, 
and blade of six the thick cardstock and safe and it says update it and i'll put yes and then exit that out and then it's always going to be safe so whenever i go to something else and then i go back to my thick cardstock it's already saved there okay so anytime i'm going to be ready to cut my thick cardstock the settings is already there for me and I already have a setting set for it. And then you can continue to do that for any of your items. Again, that's only if you don't like the presets that they already have for you. But if you know it on the top of your head, you don't have to save every single thing. Like I know already from the top of my head that my car stock, uh, this is the settings that I like to use. So I just go up and down right here really quick and... When I'm ready to cut out vinyl, I go down really quick, like on uh, my blade of three, fours of ten, and then a uh, speed of six, one pass, and then I send my vinyl to cut. So that's how I do it, all right? But if you want to save them, that's the way you're going to save them. All right, the next question is how to add a background in the patterns. So for that question is if you go to your fill option, the, the one that looks like the paint palette, and you click on the third option here, that is the fill with pattern, you're going to see that you have patterns in here. And basically like all you have to do is click on one of the patterns and then your item is going to turn to that pattern. That's you are going to save the pattern of your choice. If it's from Etsy that you bought your pattern, if you bought it from Creative Fabrica, if you saved a background that you really liked from Google and stuff like that. So once you save it, you first need to save the background into your computer. Once it's saved, you are going to go look for that pattern. I'm just here at the quick access and I am actually gonna go into, let's say, Christmas and all right so this one right here and then you're gonna have to go to your library you're gonna go into your patterns folder and then this background I'm just going to drag it into my pattern folder and the uh, pattern is right here it's inside of my pattern folder and I'm gonna do it again I went to my quick access down here folder I am going to look for the background that I want to import folder. So I'm going to click on it and I am going to drag it into my pattern. Again, I am going to the pattern in there. I'm going to exit that out and all the patterns are there already. So when I go back to design, let me ungroup this. And it, I'm here in my fill icon go to the third option and all your patterns are going to be there so if i click on a pattern it's already in there all right so that's it with all the questions from part two. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to comment down below so I can do a part three for you guys. Again, I'm wishing you the best happy new year, the best year ever. A lot of us went through a lot of stuff last year and during this pandemic. But like I said, believe in yourself. You got this. I'm here to help you out. Stay tuned because I have a lot more videos for you coming. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. Share, 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 guys. The more you share, the more people find our channel and the more we grow. You know I'm on the road to 100K subscribers this year. Anyways, guys, if you are not in my Facebook crafting group, it is called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. I would love to see you guys over there. And as always, I hope everyone's having a blessed day. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.